considered the only elite endurance race born from a feature film, the Shoran Partners Cool and Gutter Gold has gone on to become one of the most iconic and celebrated races of its kind anywhere in the world. Featuring some of the fittest athletes on the planet, competitors will take on a 23km ski paddle, a 3.5km swim, a 6km board paddle, and if they're still standing, an 8km beach run to the finish. Four and a half hours of absolute torture. And it's a true test of grit and strength. There's absolutely nowhere to hide. Staged in the magnificent setting of Queensland's Gold Coast, the epic race is a test of skill and stamina, where only the brave reign supreme. It doesn't get any harder than this. There's nothing easy about it at all. In the men's race, everyone is looking to bring down seven times champion Ali Day. He's the best this race has seen. We've got to do something to get him. You know, I just want to get as close as I can to perfecting that race. While the women's field has never been more wide open. Every time you get to put your foot on the line, it's a pretty special moment. You go to another level in this race. Get ready for the ultimate test of human endeavor as the best of the best take on one of the toughest multi-skilled races on the planet. Racing for glory in the prestigious Shaw and Partners Cool and Gutter Gold. Located in the magnificent setting of Queensland's picturesque Gold Coast, Coolangatta is situated along the east coast of Australia. From food and wine, festivals, art, culture and music, to sporting and lifestyle, Queensland is home to a variety of world-class events. Ever since the inaugural race back in 1984, the Coolangatta Gold has gone on to become a world-class sporting event, with the 42-kilometre endurance race now considered the holy grail of surf sports. This year's men's race features an exceptional field with 30 starters, headed by seven times champion Ali Day, who's taken ownership of the race in recent years. The women's race features a small but strong field, headed by four times race winner Courtney Hancock, but she'll have her hands full with any number of other athletes in contention. The Cool and Gutter Gold is so special because it is so iconic. It's old, you know, you look back to the, the movie in 84 with Guy Leach and hundreds of thousands of people, you know, um, racing from Service Paradise. Grew up watching it on TV, the movie and uh, the brothers fighting it out. And I think just the years of history that it's had and um, the amount of success that it's, that it's produced and just how iconic the event is, I think that has really created something special in surf life saving. It is probably the most iconic surf sports race there is and to be out here and racing it as a Kiwi is pretty awesome. This is sort of the epicentre of surf sports and um, it's where everyone moves to be a great clubby. So, you know, it's pretty special to have this race going along the, the foreshore of this, this iconic place. I love the Gold Coast, an amazing spot to be, to train and, and the lifestyle we have here as an Ironman. Having it here, it's pretty special and I know the Gold Coast community love to get behind it, which makes it even bigger moment for us. It's a really tough race, it really is. It's um, it's tough just getting to the start line. You know, you gotta do a lot of work obviously to get, get your foot on the start line. A lot can go wrong in the preparation as well. So again, you've gotta have good people around you, good, good support, good coaches, and I'm lucky to have that. And this is 42 kilometers over four hours. That's, in any sport, that's pretty unheard of. It's certainly a tough race to win and I think everyone that has won it has definitely proven themselves because you can't win this race by luck. I think it's it's grueling, you're not just racing other athletes, you're racing the actual race itself. Obviously we got quite a bit of experience this year and Courtney and Lana have both won it. Quartz has won it four times I think. Yeah, so in terms of experience it's going to be hard to match them so just sort of start in the race and see where I'm at and hopefully I can sort of stay with them for the first few. I'm really confident with um, with the work that we've done and you know I just want to get as close as I can to perfecting that race. Toppling Ali, the, you know, the peak of his form is the best this race has seen so to take him is the ultimate goal and challenge so yeah to just yeah to be an awesome day and I think it's definitely possible. It's not just Ali's race, he's won it a few times I think it's six or seven now but everything can change in, in a heartbeat. Ali's got He's got everything, he's got the work, he's got the talent, he's got kind of a killer mindset to just stay focused and drilled in on what he's doing at all times and he's definitely the one to be. Yeah, he's been the standard for the past however many years. I don't know if anyone will get him but we'll sure as hell give it a crack, eh? It's a very deep, talented field this year and uh, a really tactical race we'll probably follow on Sunday and 
um, you, know, you just never know. Really excited to see how far I can push myself. It's definitely going to be a lot of tactics going into this, but I'll come out with a good result at the end of the day. It's going to be a pretty gruelling day out there. It's going to be hot and it's going to be really fast competition. Probably one of the most competitive fields I reckon in the last 10 years. Forward to getting on the start line and hoping to execute the plan that I have, whether that eventuates or not, we'll have to wait and see. Again, it's another year, another year stronger, so we'll see what happens. To win the cool and got a gold would be like, amazing. It's the only one my dad didn't win, so it'd be pretty cool to win it myself. To get the win would be unbelievable, and as you said, be a giant slayer and take down Ellie. Starting in Coolangatta, the competitors begin with a gruelling 23km ski paddle, the longest leg of the race, followed by a 1km beach sprint. Then it's back into the water for a 3.5km ocean swim. The final water leg is a 6.1km board paddle, before it's back to transition for the final leg, an exhausting 8.2km run along the sand to the finish. With the start just minutes away, the stage is set for a dramatic day of racing, with plenty of nervous energy on the beach in anticipation of the long road ahead. Finally, the gun goes for the men's start, with 30 paddlers in a mad scramble to exit the beach cleanly. At 23 kilometres long, the ski paddle will be the longest leg of the race. As if to make a statement, Day sprints out of the blocks and is into an early lead, with close rival Matt Bevilacqua in close pursuit. Yeah, I had a great start. I got to the can, you know, up there with the, with the front runners with, uh, with I think, Bevy and, and Horgy was right next to me as well. The gun went, got a really good, nice start, um, was up there and feeling really good, you know. Uh, runners are kind of my strength, so um, put, the, put the foot down and uh, probably probably spent a few too, much, too many cookies in that first um, 10 minutes or so. I knew I was going to get on quick and try and get to the front, try and dictate a bit of pace. With the men now tracking north, it was time for the women's race start. As luck would have it, a set of waves hits the shoreline just as the gun goes, with a number of competitors stalled by the broken water. It was all a bit quick, to be honest, which is probably a good thing because I didn't have time to get too anxious or stressed. It all just went really quickly. And I was lacking a little bit of confidence. I was just focused on getting a clean start off that ski leg and that shore dunk. Managed to do that and we got away quite clean. Didn't have a great start, but we were going and everyone, um, everyone kind of merged together. I knew I just had to get a really good start because the girls, they're really fast off the line. That's exactly what I did. I was first to the can and I'm really happy with that. To be able to finally have a go and have a crack at racing the girls that I've watched win it so many times is absolutely amazing. With the girls in a tight bunch and settling into a rhythm, the men's race continues at a frenetic pace, with everyone trying to stay in touch with Ali Day, who sets the early pace. Yeah, the pace was hectic off the start, practically like a 500 metre ski race, which I was prepared for, I knew it was gonna happen, but it's one thing being prepared mentally and physically having to do it. And so it hurt a bit, really hurts towards the back end. It's an incredibly uh, top half heavy, leg and you want to be really efficient, focusing on your technique, catching those runners where they are. It was still pretty calm out there, but the wind wasn't really up that much, so we got some good little good little bumps the whole way down, but I felt like the bumps the first probably four or five K were the best. Ski power is the longest leg of the race, so going into it, I do think of it as almost a ski paddler's race. If you can get a gap or hurt people a lot in that, then it's really hard to come back in the shorter leg spot. Ski is 23K. All the rest is only 20, so. My goal was sit on the wash, make sure I get into that spot, and I missed the wash. And then the main goal was for me and Jared McDonald to paddle our way back into it and hopefully get in with them on the swim. I, I know my pacing really well. It was just really important to just go to my level. You don't want to go too hard too soon. You want to sort of build into it. The strategy was to, you know, be in the front pack. Uh, I knew that lots of younger kids are maybe not as strong in the ski, so we wanted to get rid of those guys. and. So that happened, but you know, I was definitely not feeling great. So uh, just was trying to hang with Borgi and Ali who were, who were looking really strong. Just coming in before the turn, pace backed off. So yeah, definitely got to take a few deep breaths. It was, it was very tough until that point. We were getting stretched by Ali's spurts and stuff. Halfway through the 23 kilometer ski leg, a group of four lead the way with Day, Bevilacqua, Hendy and Borg opening a two minute gap on the rest of the field. When we turned to tally, there was still the four of us just working together to get back. Obviously, 
it was pretty hot out there, pretty hard, and you weren't going to get much assistance, obviously, paddling back into the wind. So at that point, it's just, okay, let's get back to pulling together. It's just the four of us at the turn, me, Borgie, TJ, and Ali. TJ was having a very good ski leg, which was surprising, I'm sure, to most of us, but um, he, he was doing well. But yeah, we had two minutes on Joe and Taddy. At the halfway point, they had two minutes on us, and that's what we got told by the IOB, and we're trying to catch up, and we got to that turn marker, and Teddy, Jared McDonald said to me, he's like, look, we're not racing for fifth and six. Let's pick this up, let's go for them, let's do some hard leads and we'll try and catch their wash. With the men's race heading back to Coolangatta, the women push further north with a group of four girls, Hancock, Papak, Rogers and Ruby Meehan, opening a small gap on the rest of the field. Put myself in a good position. I was just playing kind of wash riding on each tattle art in front of me. So um, yeah, I did it with least amount of energy as possible. I tried to just maintain a good pace, but I also didn't want to blow out. So I kind of waited for the girls to come up beside me and we all just sat together and did some wash leads. Restricted by a painful elbow injury, Carla Papak struggles to stay in touch with the lead group. Everything just hurt. It hurt to try and stay up with the top girls and they were doing a few little bursts of speed. So it was, it was really hard to stay on their wash and I was actually battling quite a lot. So that whole 10K was, was hell. So I basically led the whole way down halfway and I was confident in my fitness and you know, it was good to set a pace to get going. You know, that's the most important thing in this race is to get a pace going and, and set it and you know, keep that up. Frustrated by all the close attention, Day does what he can to break free from the pack. Yeah, it's definitely a tactic of Ali's over the last few years. Well, every year I've raced him in the gold. He's so strong in the ski, it's incredible. He's, yeah, he does like short spurts of about, you know, only 30 seconds to just to make sure you're uncomfortable. And he, he does that really well to his credit. You want to try and make it as uncomfortable as you can for everyone. Because if we all just paddled together and sat there, like I believe the only way to, to race a cool and go to gold is to go after it. You know, don't die wondering. Don't wait to get the tap on the shoulder to start moving. It makes people feel probably pretty annoyed and, and pretty uncomfortable, but it makes me feel uncomfortable as well. And the longer the race goes, the, the better it, it falls in my, my hands. It'll go spur for two minutes, take 30 seconds off, spur it again for two minutes. Yeah, so try and shake us all off. It takes a lot of focus trying to spurt with him. And then when you're mentally okay, like I can rest, I can stop, cruise, and then he does it again. It's, I think he tries to do it to catch a few people off guard. I'm a competitive person. It's not monotonous for me to come back. I love pushing myself and competing against myself. And I know my body so well now. I know this race so well, and I know what it takes to, to win. What the lead group doesn't realise is that the chase group featuring Joe Collins and Taddy McDonnell back in fifth and sixth are rapidly closing in. Definitely closing the gap slowly about halfway on the way back and it was a lot of work from me and Taddy and to then see that gap closing was pretty motivational and Taddy was definitely a big motivator. I was probably a little bit down on myself at the time thinking, oh, I ruined the start, I botched it, there's no way I'm in this race, but we kept working together and the pace was up for us and we, we ended up catching them near the end. Halfway through the women's ski leg, and it's still Papak, Hancock, Meehan and Rogers sharing the lead and gradually moving away from the rest of the field. The pace really dropped. The girls kind of dropped the pace and I actually ended up leading for most of the second half. And I felt good. I felt good and I knew that they were probably feeling good too because the pace was quite slow. And then I thought, all right, I'm just going to keep doing this the whole race. <laughs> Despite his best efforts to break from the pack, Ali Day and the lead group are joined by two other competitors, much to everyone's surprise. Yeah, late stages of ski, I, I got a real sh shock surprise when uh, Taddy McDonald and Joe Collins pulled up next to us and I thought, geez, they've pulled us back. We've either paddled really, really slow. Credit to those boys. What they were able to do, I think we're almost 90 seconds on them. So. Those late stages of the ski, it starts to play in your mind a little bit. Closing stage of the ski, we just got onto their wash just about the end of the rock wall and I kind of got onto the wash and I'm like, yeah, daddy. And Ali looked back with this look of disgust, like what the hell? And it was definitely a good feeling, but I definitely knew that we'd work the hardest and we had a lot of work to do going into this run swim. McDonnell, Borg and Day managed to catch the same wave and are the first onto the beach. With the first leg completed, six competitors hit the sand, ready for a one kilometre sprint, with everyone keeping Ali Day in check. Yeah, run went good. Yeah, I just tried to stay really composed, tried to 
again, just focus on what I was doing, focus on my breathing and yeah, just tried to, I guess, get comfortable and start thinking about this from ahead. Pretty good at running. I'd, I'd assume there's probably might be a slig and I didn't want to push it too hard, but I pushed the pace a little bit. And then I knew as soon as I went around that turning can and probably not even a meter behind Ali, just like staring, death staring the back of his head, like I'm not losing those feet, I'm hanging on here. Day is used to racing out in front all on his own and he isn't enjoying the extra company. Any thoughts of an easy race have quickly vanished. I mean, that's the first time there were six guys jumping the swim together. I mean, that hasn't happened to me in, in really ever. So that was pretty foreign to me. The fast pace is starting to take its toll, with everyone feeling the pinch. Really struggled to get into my rhythm, you know, spasming all around my shoulders. I couldn't really catch the water. Ali was spurting again, similar to the ski, and it's really hard to stay on the feet. I got out into the start of the swim and I was right there at the front and I had a, like a cramp from my hip flexor all the way up to my shoulder. And I was just had to swim through that for like a kilometre. Swim leg is one of my strong legs as well. And I wanted to see what I could do in it. I was a bit behind the pack and then I managed to swim around in most of them. And then Joe Collins was on Ali's feet. I had my board handler there giving me encouragement and I was just kind of touching his feet every 10 or so strokes, making sure he knew that I was there. And he kept on doing faster, slower, faster, slower to make it harder for me to stay on the wash. Always the competitor days up to his old tricks and puts in a series of sharp bursts to unsettle the pack. When you're jumping in the swim and people are tapping you on the feet and you're not getting away, you can start to be pretty negative about it. I ended up staying there and then he did one spurt. My goggles fogged up a little bit and I missed the go and by then it was too late. I couldn't catch him again. I looked back again and he'd gone and Jackson Borg had swum up on my feet and it looked as though we'd, we started to create a bit of a gap from the other guys behind us, which is a good thing. And for the life of me, I tried to shake Borgie a couple of times in the swim. So my game plan was to keep within striking distance of Ali. He likes to twist the dagger a little bit in the swim and try and get a bit of a gap. So I knew to try and stay in touch and distance and make sure that he wasn't able to do that. With nothing separating the top six place getters, a real battle is developing. In the closing stages of the 23 kilometre ski leg, it's Hancock, Rogers and Papak sharing the lead, opening a gap over Ruby Meehan, now back in fourth. Realistically, half of your race is done. Um, but also the race just starts after that ski leg. So it's a step done and you just got to focus on the next step, which was going through that run leg. I was pretty happy with my position coming off that ski and the lot going on, you've got to get your water pack off, you've got to get um, your, your jacket. Like there's, a, there's definitely a lot that goes into it. You've got to always wake the legs up a bit. You've been sitting down for two hours in your ski and um, got to get that blood moving straight away. Thought I would feel better from just going not too hard in that ski. I thought I'd be feeling a lot fresher but Courtney actually set quite a good pace in that run. So I didn't mind that she kind of set that pace high, but I was kind of like, ooh, I'm, I'm hurting here. Day continues to set the pace in the men's race, leading the way in the swim with Jackson Borg in close pursuit. Halfway through the swim was great. Ali did drop all of us a little bit, which sort of puts you in a little bit of a pa panic mode, but I was like, okay, I know I can do this. And so I managed to get back onto his feet and we had dropped the rest of the guys, which I was really happy with. When I looked at my handle at Wesberg, he sort of said, you've got 100 metres on the next guys. I just said to myself, okay, well, I don't feel like I'm gonna drop Borgie now, uh, but what I can do is, is, is work really hard for this back half of the swim and put a gap on the next guys. Borgie and Ali pulled away. They only had 20 seconds at the halfway mark and I had to go to work by myself coming back and they ended up losing it up. I lost a lot more ground on the return journey. Ellie dropped me and then I actually, I kind of hit a wall. I lost a bit of motivation. I'm like, oh God, everything started feeling heavy. And then Borgie came straight past. He's gun swimmer and he jumped straight onto Ellie's feet. And then I saw Bevy and I knew that I had to just come and jump onto his feet. And I just sat there for the rest of the way. At the start of the 3.5 kilometer women's swim, it's Carla Papak, Courtney Hancock and Lana Rogers leading the way with a 40 second gap over Ruby Meehan. As soon as we jumped into that swim, I got a bit of a stitch on my right side uh, and the girls weren't going super, super hard. I was finding it okay to sit on their wash, but I just was really breathing into that stitch and 
It took a little while for that to um, dissipate, but it did. And then the swim was actually quite comfortable from that point on. Felt pretty good. It was a, a tough swim this year, um, just with that sweep again. So it's all just really in this race, just taking it by moments and, and yeah, trying to create opportunities for yourself. I felt a little bit more relaxed. Um, I always do when I start that swim leg and um, you just have to go through it. It was 50 minutes um, and we just had to play wash ride on um, other competitors um, that were in that top three. In the closing stages of the swim, Ali Day continues to lead, just ahead of Jackson Borg, who's proving a real threat. Showing all his surf experience, Day manages to catch a wave into the beach, opening a small break over Borg. Yeah, coming out of the swim, we were relatively together. I didn't realise at the time, but I'd wait for the wave and jumped onto it, whether it was he had gotten up and started waiting. So he put about 11 seconds onto me, which is, was definitely not part of the game plan. But that's just a bit of his experience as well. The chase group, consisting of four competitors, exit the water, just two minutes behind and desperate to catch Day and Borg. And the race is on. Frustrated by his inability to control the race, Day finally senses an opening and seizes the moment to sprint away. You know, you get out of the swim, you go, okay, well, I'm, I'm two legs down, two legs to go, and they're two of my favourite legs. I love getting on the board. Uh, had a great start, got guided out there really well by my coaches and my team, and just got to work. Yeah, the start of the board pal didn't really go to plan. I jumped on the board a little bit behind Ali, wanted to try and catch him a little bit, but then had the roll away, got absolutely smoked, lost my drink bottle, which was definitely not part of the plan, but I was try and keep myself focused. Now two and a half hours into the gruelling race and Bevilacqua, back in fifth, starts to feel the effects of a fast race and struggles with debilitating cramp. Ran around to grab my board, I was cramping everywhere. My forearms were going, my doctors, and then my abdominal muscles were just tearing apart. Like I couldn't even really need meal paddles. So started sipping my drink on the board and um, it, it alleviated pretty quickly and I could get into my work on the board. For the first time in the race, Day is exactly where he wants to be, out in front and in control made a decision to get up and start wading you know out of the water and I think it was probably 10 15 maybe even 20 meters that I had on on Jackson poor boy he had to roll I think on his board he was just telling me so I just tried to um yeah keep the tempo upbeat get around the the first turning boys and work the hell out of the runners despite his best efforts Borg struggles to stay with day and it's a defining moment in the race the board leg was a bit tough for me um I was planning to try and be with Ali going into it and so I had to do it all by myself and I knew I had two great board paddlers behind me and so my mindset probably wasn't what it should have been at the time, it was a bit when are they going to catch me instead of let's try and hold them off and go for it but yeah it was a bit of a struggle. With Day pulling away from Borg, the chase group headed by Bevilacqua worked together to bridge the gap. Uh, it was good to get in the board and I felt quite good once I could get some um, nutrition in and um, could get to work because we were getting some runs on the way down. I worked really hard, um, you know, I was up on my knees pumping out, you know, 80 to 100 strokes, really trying to work the ocean, keep my chest low um, and every time I got down to my stomach I'd take a drink and just get back up and go again so I knew it was going to be tougher once we turned on the board, like obviously punching back in the wind similar to the ski but um, yeah, I knew that if I could make the most and take the advantage um, while we had the runners behind us, the wind behind us, um, that was going to be, you know, it could be a, you know, a really deciding factor. Right at the wrong time, someone did a spurt and they just got away from me. I was uh, Matt Bevelacqua got away um, with Taddy McDonald and um, yeah, right at that time, I sort of was in the wrong spot to go with them. Had to make up some ground again going out on the board. Um, and then got some runners and pushed into uh, fourth place with Taddy McDonald and yeah, just caught the runs all the way down basically with Taddy on my wash. So he was able to have a good rest and, and we teamed up and used a lot of, um, used a lot of each other to work, work back into the win. The women's race continues to be a close fought contest with nothing separating the front runners, Papak, Rogers and Hancock. Despite a disruptive preparation, Hancock's won this race four times before, so she knows what it takes. The swimmer is incredibly tough today. Um, 
we had a massive sweep um, that we swam back into. So I don't know the times, but I'd say the swim was probably one of the longest swims that it has been. I led that whole way and had the two girls on my feet. So it was really, obviously couldn't break them, really hard to um, try and get ahead in that. And We were going through each other's wash. So um, first, back to second, back to third, and then just taking each other leads one step at a time. I found the pace actually not too bad. Swim, I would say, has been one of my weaker legs in the past. So it was probably the one that I was more worried about. But once I saw that the pace was manageable, I thought, okay, this is, this is doable. Showing all his surf skill pedigree, Day puts in a huge effort on the board and extends his lead to two minutes over Jackson Borg. Well, yeah, when I turned, I got a good look at who was sort of behind me um, and, and how much I sort of had. So I just, again, like in that board, I was trying to develop and try to work really, really hard to, to just at least keep that gap the same, if not extend it. Now in a whole world of pain, Borg falls further behind and is now just trying to salvage his race. So during the board leg, Ali was dropping me a bit. He was twi twisting my screws and yeah, getting slowly further and further ahead of me. Bevilacqua makes a remarkable recovery and is now on the march, looking to hunt down first and second. I was really happy with my board leg. I think Ali still put 60 seconds in, but uh, we caught a lot up on Jackson Borg. So yeah, that went quite well. Um, the board leg has been my Achilles heel and gold, gold's gone past. So done a lot more work this year on the board. In the closing stages of the women's swim, there's nothing between Lana Rogers, Carla Papak and Courtney Hancock, with the three shadowing one another every step of the way. Unfortunately, couldn't get a body wave coming in, but felt really good, conserved the right amount of energy and, and felt strong at this time of the race. There was little bumps coming through and Courtney was a little bit in front and I knew that, again, you don't want to give anyone any, any space because they just run with it and then you're kind of playing catch up. So I was a little bit freaking out as I was swimming because she was a little bit in front. It's really important to get your nutrition in um, at that stage of the race. You know, you've just come out of an hour swim and you're obviously feeling a little bit out of it. So really just making sure, um, yeah, getting in your gel and water and, and, you know, whatever you're taking. With nothing separating the top three and with just two legs to go, the women's race is still wide open. I think after that swim, I felt started to feel a little bit more, I can do this because I knew that swim leg was going to probably be the toughest one. I wasn't trying to think about top three. I was just thinking, no, like if you're in top three, then you can win. You've got an opportunity. Your, your plan was to be in the fight and you're here and your plan has basically gone exactly to plan. The swell going out there, which was a bit of fun, you know, to get out there and have a bit of a change up. but. Um, again, just like trying to conserve um, energy in your legs, especially knowing that you're going to have a nine kilometre run um, when you finish the board. And again, the pace just wasn't super high. I actually led the whole board leg and kept the pace low, got up on my knees a few times. My tactic was to kind of exhaust their legs a little bit because I knew the run was coming up. Three and a half hours into the epic race and Ali Day finishes the board leg in emphatic style, catching a wave all the way into the beach to further extend his lead with just one leg to go. I am feeling good after I got off the board. I cracked a great wave around the can, brought that in. Showing off the crowd, I was like, please, please give me a wave, please give me a wave. So I got a wave, worked really hard to get that actually. And some of worked really hard, that swim board combo, because it, it does feel pretty um, strange going from, from one discipline to the other. Despite losing ground on the board, Borg hasn't given up just yet and is desperate to run down Day, who now has a commanding three minute lead. Got a nice wave from the can going on the board, which is what I was hoping for. So that was nice. And then jumping off the board onto the run, my legs, I felt instantly that they weren't exactly where they needed to be. I was just hoping that I'd be able to hold off the other guys, but you go, go give it a crack and I just tried to hold on for the run. Following a strong board leg, a rejuvenated Matt Bevilacqua closes the gap on Borg and exits the beach in hot pursuit of the leaders gained a lot back on Borgie. Um, I kind of, he missed another wave in the board, so um, had to catch back up to Borgie on that. But um, yeah, felt really good jumping off the board. We'd done really efficient work and um, was ready to get in the run leg. 
Despite exiting the board in fifth position, Joe Collins is recognised as the strongest runner in the men's field, and his race is far from over. We kind of rounded the can, got onto a wave, got to the beach, and I knew I had a lot of work to do in that run. Despite her best endeavours, Courtney Hancock fails to break free on the board, with the three front runners, Rogers, Papak, and Hancock, continuing to jostle for the lead, setting the race up for an exciting finish. It is really hard um, in that area of the race to break anyone in the board. The board's um, quite easy to wash off someone, so that was the spot where we all stayed together again. I think I'm an okay board paddler. Um, I just wanted to get through that as fresh as possible leading into that run leg, and um, I managed to do that. We were kind of playing a wash lead with um, the other two competitors. Confident in her running ability, Carla Papak is happy to keep the pace off and to share the lead, backing herself to bring the race home in the final run leg. In my head, I thought, well, no one's really keen to up this pace, so let's just keep it light. I'm going to lay on my tummy for most of this to, to keep my legs nice and fresh from the run, and I think this is going to turn into a run finish because it really doesn't seem like anyone wants to go for it right now. Day starts the run leg in the all too familiar position of first, but unlike previous years, he has plenty of threats coming his way, with only a three minute cushion and stronger runners behind him. Day knows his race is far from over. When I got out of the board, um, the guy said to me, like, you got a bit of a buffer, you know, don't go hell for leather right now, just build into it. So I built into it. Bevelac was a strong runner and sets off in quick time, knowing Borg and Day are still within reach. By the time you get off on the board, your whole upper body is yeah, done. So you really finish it off on the board and um, the legs still have a bit of work. But um, like I said, we're kneeling on the board, punching into it, putting some speed in. So my doctors were really starting to cramp. Um, the cramping was a nightmare today. And I was a bit worried going to the run. I didn't know how that cramping was going to go, but managed to start getting to some 415 kilometres in that really soft sand barefoot. So felt good and got into the work and the run. You're pumped at that stage because there's still a lot of hard work to go, but I know there's one leg to go. And I knew that at that stage, I got down the bottom of the stairs at Kira there and the guy said, you got a couple of minutes. And I just knew at that point, it was like, okay, get 4K up and then get back. Bevilacqua rapidly closes in on Borg and is buoyed by the news that he's already made up a minute on day. I was 30 seconds back on Borgie and caught him pretty quickly and the 4.15 pace felt good. I didn't know, to, like I knew Ali had three minutes but I didn't know what pacing he was doing early. I just thought I'd stay within myself and do the pace that I could know I could maintain. Um, and then it started to trickle in that I was catching him and you know, I was already giving you know the most I could, so I was holding off those cramps. You know, I was really dancing on the line of fully cramping and not stopping. This race can make or break the best of them, with Borg now struggling and with nothing more to give. Bevy had overtaken me pretty early in the run. There's a bit of a crappy feeling knowing that okay, the race is out of my reach. I'm just trying to hit a podium here. But especially with the run leg in this race, it's not too much who can run the quickest, it's who's feeling the best and who can grind it out. Joe Collins has the fastest run leg and with nothing to lose, he exits the board in fifth position and sprints into action, desperate for a podium finish. Getting off the board, going into the run, it's, it's a great feeling every time I've done this race and I kind of get a little bit excited, everyone kind of cheering me on, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, let's go. And I kind of jump on and started moving straight away and dropped TJ pretty quick. And as I was coming over the concrete and looking down the stairs onto the beach, I could see where everyone was. And I'd, I knew I had some work to catch Borgie and Teddy, but I knew I was up for the challenge and I'd, I went for it. Bevilacqua puts in an incredible run. And after passing Borg is now gunning for day with the margin now less than two minutes and closing. Obviously, you never never count your chickens before they hatch. I knew Bevy and the other guys were coming pretty pretty far, so I just tried to um, just to try to keep the momentum going and get, keep the turnover going. Particularly, obviously, running on that soft sand with the water, you know, lapping up on our ankles, it, it makes the run uh, pretty difficult. I knew I was gaining like almost 60 seconds in that first half of the run, but uh, you know, you're in. I can't explain how much pain you're in and how far two minutes feels or 60 seconds feels. I could see him by the time I did the turn, but uh, yeah, cramping was very, very close to being fully debilitating. So 
I was just trying to put as much pace in that I could without basically stopping completely. Collins is also on the charge and continues to close the gap on the four runners ahead. It's a, it's a bit daunting, you know that that sand is very soft and the year before my calves blew out and I was kind of just battling to finish in fifth. Seeing those boys I knew I had to almost hold off my pace and just realise, yep I'm running faster than I will catch them and not get too eager too early and blow my calves out. So it was really a maintenance game on that whole run. Just like the men's, the women's race is proving equally tight, with nothing separating the top three as they reach the closing stages of the six kilometre board paddle. So I was hoping to maybe turn the can in front and maybe get a wave out in front, which would give me a buffer time to just put my shoes on. But Corny ended up actually coming beside me just before we turned the can and then we all caught a wave again together. <laughs> I just wanted to get through that board leg feeling hydrated and ready to go into that run leg and I did that. To the run, it was really challenging. Um, it was kind of like a decision whether you wear shoes or not shoes. Using her wealth of race experience, Hancock takes advantage of Papak's shoe stop to make a small surge. She kept running and I kind of put my shoes on. I think it was a quick transition, but you know, it still probably takes 30 seconds, 20, I don't, I'm not too sure. But I think the advantage was that I was able to do that run along the pavement with shoes on. And because my legs were still fresh, I kind of just gunned it, which is where you can kind of run fast because you're not on soft sand. And I caught her straight away. So I think that that advantage of putting the shoes on and yes, wasting a bit of time was, you know, I was able to make it up pretty quickly. With Papak and Hancock battling out in front, Lana Rogers falls further behind in third. Connie and I kind of took off a little bit. I thought, okay, I think Lana might be out of this. And, and she was, she didn't really recover after that. And yeah, well then we were into the run leg. Being high tide this year is very hard. So it made for a very tough run and there wasn't pretty much no hard sand out there. And Incredibly, after over four hours of racing and with just a final run home, nothing separates first and second, with the race set for a thrilling finish. I got a little bit in front of Courtney just through that soft sand run. I, I, I actually started, I was feeling quite good. So I kind of just sat just a little bit higher up than her on the sand. She was running in the water just because it was a little bit harder, but because I had my shoes on, I ran a little bit higher up, but um, I think it was a good spot to be running with the shoes on. Probably barefoot, better to be down on the water's edge. So we were kind of like a little bit spaced apart, but I kept her there the whole time. And I was also talking to myself quite a bit, just like, you got this, you know, you, you wanted this to come down to the run leg. That was the plan. So everything is going to plan right now. You, you can do this. With just two kilometres to the finish, Day starts to feel the pressure, knowing that both Bevilacqua and the young Kiwi Collins are rapidly closing in. See, once you turn up at Bolingo and you, you run, I ran past Bevy, I ran past Jackson, we run past everyone, don't you? So you know how much you had. I had a couple of looks, you know, once I once I got, you know, a K 1500 metres away from the finish, but um, I just put my head down. I didn't look up at all and just tried to really, um, you know, almost run, you know, a minute hard, minute easy sort of thing, but just tried to keep it really controlled. And Closing stages, I was 60 seconds down and I knew I'd gained two minutes over the total, but I literally, I had my watch going and I was doing 4.15s and I just couldn't go any faster. So incredibly painful to have been so close, but I, you know, I was happy to put on a race and um, be the closest anyone has. I started closing the gap on Teddy and I noticed that and I was probably about maybe 200 metres off him. And then we got to that turning marker, I just passed him and Borgie was the next one, about another 300 up and I got him about halfway back and it was probably one of the best feelings of the race. Just just kind of gliding past him. I noticed I was probably treating a lot lighter, bit of a smaller human and I knew that I had to hold that pace on, otherwise he'd, he'd see the weakness in me. Collins puts in an incredible run, moving from fifth to third and into medal contention. Ali was probably what? five minutes ahead of me going into that run and I I knew I was a good runner, I'm definitely not that good and as soon as I passed Borgie I knew Bibby was out of range, he was about half a kilometre in front and I knew I just had to kind of keep my feet moving but not go too fast to blow them up. The closing stages of the run, I was knew that I was going to be able to hold my position, I just wanted to keep the legs turning, ticking over and those stairs really do suck a band. 
Mate, maybe we need to build a ramp or an escalator or something there. Despite brave efforts from Bevel Aqua and Collins, it's not enough. With Ali Day managing to hold on, taking the Coolangatta title for a record eighth time. Despite any number of challenges, in the end, Day proves too strong and is a deserved winner, proving yet again that he is the undisputed king. Today I'll, I'll remember for a really long time because it was, um, I got pushed, you know, from, from start to finish. Um, and again, I was really proud in the fact that I stayed calm and, and really executed my race plan. It's just relief right now, hey, like, uh, I had to go pretty deep then into the well in the last run leg, so um, yeah, had just so, so much help and support the whole day today and then in the lead up. So the guys behind me, you're seeing they're getting closer and closer, they're, they're figuring it out and, and that's great. This race has sort of changed my life, so yeah, it means a lot to me today and as I said, I'm, I'm extremely grateful for the people I have around me in my corner. Very special, you know, like my wife and my son are there, you know what I mean, and, and they've been through like the highs and the lows. They've been here for every every King Go to Gold that I've done. So, it's them, it's, it's my mates, it's my coaches and my handlers. Um, it's just extremely special. In a superhuman effort, Matt Bevilacqua manages to claw back over two minutes from day, finishing in second, just a minute behind. Crossing that Phil and get a goal line, I think anyone will attest, it's just the best feeling. Like, people can be three, four minutes behind you and you're still worried, you know? So, um, I knew I'd, you know, lost by 60 seconds or whatever it was, and. I'm um, still a little bit disappointed, it's so, so good to finish that. This is the closest anyone's been to Ali, so I'll take that, you know, he's, he's just the greatest we've seen in this, this event, so um, yeah, he's, he, was, he was very strong out there today, you know, all, all legs. I kind of said before the race that if you, if you beat him at this race, you know, you, you, you've been the best ever, so um, I've been the closest ever, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, like I said, it was still a really tough day, I just made a lot of mistakes nutrition-wise and a lot to improve, so um, yeah, he's definitely beatable. Yeah, that's the race and um, yeah, I'm happy with the result. Now in the closing stages of the women's race and still nothing separates Hancock and Papak, who have shadowed one another from start to finish. As soon as we turned the 4K marker, which could not have come soon enough. I started to um, up the ante a little bit, just a, just a smidge, because I, I was hurting at that point. I definitely was. Um, upped it up, and she she stayed. She did she did a really good job. She she was right there. I never really got too much of a gap on her, but you know I just kept my legs moving, and eventually the gap got bigger and bigger. Never to the point where I felt like I could relax or I felt like I had it, which was torturous. With the finish line in sight. Papak finally makes her move and inches ahead. Carla and I were neck and neck pretty much the whole way until the last two k. She got a bit of a, a bit of a gap, like only about ten meters, and she just kind of extended that to I guess another forty meters. And I, at that time, I you know couldn't quite go with her. With Papak and Hancock battling it out for the lead, Lana Rogers loses ground in third spot. I just needed to keep running and made sure I didn't stop running. And then obviously I think the I've created that gap and that gap got larger with the first and second plates. Um, so I was just trying to finish the race in that position. Hancock is a champion of the sport and she's known for her fighting spirit, but she's now resigned to the fact that her race is over and that she'd have to settle for second. It kind of stayed like that the whole way and um, unfortunately I couldn't lift to that next pace to catch her and that was where the race kind of, um, I fell to, fell to second. So I knew that anything could happen and I wasn't going to let myself, you know, have that moment yet because my legs were dying and I just needed to get to that line. Having seen off the Hancock challenge, Carla Papak is a relieved winner, taking the Shore and Partners Cool and Gatta Gold crown in emphatic style and it's a special moment to savour. I saw the tape and thought, I don't even have enough energy to claim this. You won, just to hold that batter above your head. Feels really good, a little bit of um, a relief because um, I wanted it so bad and a little bit of like a, holy I just did that. <laughs> I was hoping that the race would come down to a run. That was kind of like an ideal situation. And as soon as Courtney and I kind of hit that stand together, I thought, I, I, I can do this. I was hoping she wouldn't be that fast, but obviously, you know, she's an amazing athlete. She's won the gold 
how many times. Despite tremendous pain, Hancock never gives up and finishes the race only 36 seconds behind Papak. Yeah, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed, but it really comes down to the day, how you're feeling and um, the preparation that you've done. And it's, um, and it's also, yeah, it's, it's tactical out there um, to get your mindset ready going into this. It's, yeah, it's really tough. At the end of the day, like I gave it my all out there and I think in myself as a person, that's all I can ask. And so I have to be proud of myself. Once again, the Shore & Partners Cool & Gatter Gold has lived up to all expectations, showing why it's such an iconic celebrated race, featuring world-class athletes taking on the elements and each other in a classic ocean encounter, and all staged on the doorstep of Queensland's magnificent Gold Coast. You know, when I first started this sport, I did the Cool and Get a Gold back when I was in the under 19s and got fifth and vowed to myself I'd never do the race, ever. So to sit here now and to have won it, you know, obviously a few times now, it's very special. It will never, it'll probably never sink in until I retire. And if you had told me I'd, I'd win again today and it'd be my eighth time, like that's just, it's just crazy. Ali's still the king. He's, what, eight now? He's something special and Hopefully next year I'll be able to give him a good crack. We're going to have a good rivalry there and I think we respect each other and um, yeah, it's just not a whole lot to be said. We just um, we just race with our actions, you know what I mean? And yeah, it's been been a pleasure to race him and um, the challenge is still on. I know that I've got a lot more time in the sport and those two in front of me are both over 30. So hopefully uh, I either they start slowing down or I speed up or they retire sooner or rather later. And it's always been I guess a goal of mine to win this race since the first year that I did it. Well, I thought I can, I can win this. I know it will take some time and effort, but um, I can and here we are. <laughs> it's my favorite race on the calendar. I absolutely love it. It's, um, it's helped me grow as, you know, not only an athlete, but a person as well. And you really have to define all odds and, and really pull into that inner strength inside to, to really get over the line. And it definitely doesn't get easier. There's so many girls coming through. And it's a brutal race and it's, one of the hardest of any sports I, I imagine you're battling not just the ocean but other competitors and fatigue the whole time and it's iconic just being along this strip of the Gold Coast and showing off the awesome beaches and the lifestyle we have here. The hardest race surf life saving has to offer. It's 42 kilometres, four and a half hours of absolute torture that you put yourselves through but um, I love it and it for me it's become addictive. I've done about five of them now. To succeed in this race, commitment, determination, consistency, a really strong team around you and you've got to want it, you know what I mean? You've got to make those extra sacrifices. Love the race, I love the location, the scenery, the little mind games you play during the race and the feeling afterwards you get. It's a beautiful place to come and spend your time with family and friends and you know the beaches here are just absolutely amazing and something else and it's so special that we get to race up and down the coastline here on the Gold Coast. It's a good vibe down here, it always is and it, like I said it's the most prestigious race surf life setting has to offer and that's why I love coming down here every year. It's super tough, I think it's just because it's so long. <laughs> It doesn't really end and you go through so many highs and lows. Like Part of my job to inspire those young kids coming through, inspire the nippers that were there today to be like, I want to do the gold. Because I was exactly like that when I was that age. It's not even about a number for me. It's about the things you learn along, along the way. It's the journey for me, the perspective I got. And it's, again, I come back to the fact that I'm just really proud of how I handled uh, moments like that today.